What's up guys, Brian here from Cross Coast Gaming, and the Master Chief Collection is finally here. I know that I've been excited and waiting for it for a while. Um, unfortunately, as you probably know if you have the game, there are a lot of parts of it that are not really working right now, like matchmaking is pretty much the main one that everyone's upset about. But one thing that is working is the Forge mode, and I love Forge. I loved it back in Halo 3 when they first uh, released it, Halo Reach was good addition to it, and their new Anniversary Forge adds something that is even more fantastic. In addition to the three canvas maps you have here, Skyward, Nebula, Awash, all totally blank for forging, they also added scripting, which is like a basic kind of almost like programming for your maps. Uh, you can think of it almost like redstone in Minecraft, like a really, really basic um, kind of structure that allows you to like change and make uh, adjustments to your map on the fly. So it's not super intuitive, I have to admit, which is why I'm making this video to kind of get people up to speed on the basics of the scripting framework that they released so you can make your own cool stuff. So I'm going to start on uh, Skyward here and go ahead and start the game and uh, I'll speed up this loading screen for you guys. All right, so this is Skyward, for those of you that are not familiar with it. It's pretty much a giant halo ring. Uh, you don't have the entire ring, obviously, but you have a fair distance. Um, it's kind of impossible to show you. They're invisible walls, but you just have a huge amount of area up and down as well. You can go like pretty far down there. But to make our little demo place, I'm going to first turn magnets on. So you do that by pressing B and going to magnets. Oh, that was already on. Enabled. And then I'm going to duplicate these by pressing down on the D-pad and just kind of make us a little area to experiment. So let's put four of these around here. And now that we have our area, I guess we'll just leave the spawns there. This is kind of in the way though, so I'm going to move this back. So for scripting, um, you can change a lot of objects in the game. Like it, it's not just the gadgets that people are led to believe in like the trailers and the videos that came out before its release, like the, the opening gate on Zanzibar. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff you can change, and the easiest way to show scripting in action is with lights. So under gadgets, under lights, go ahead and choose, if you're following along, a color. Uh, I'll do purple, it's nice and noticeable. And go ahead and place that right there. And it is pretty bright here, so you can't really see it that well. I mean, you can obviously see the purple, but when we're on the ground, it might be hard to see. So I'm going to put a vehicle behind it, kind of get some reflection there. Put the war dog right here. Nice and purple war dog. Now you can obviously see the lights on. So what we're going to do now is when you press X to go to the items, there's a scripting category. And inside this category are three subcategories, switches, timers, and triggers. And I'm going to go through all three of these really quickly, um, one at a time. So first is switches, which inside is switch on, switch off, switch toggle. So we'll start with on. Switch on, basically the easiest little intro to scripting object you can make. And place that somewhere you can reach it as a human being. And then once you have that placed, there's one more thing we need to change. So if we go to our light over here, and you press X on it, go to scripting, every object in the game has a scripting little uh, submenu in here. So for the light, go to scripting, and you'll see we have some options here. The only one we're really worried about right now is the broadcast channel. So by default, all three of these, the spawn channel, the power channel, the broadcast channel, are all negative one. But uh, what we're going to do is change that to one for now. And then go to our switch, and you'll see we have the same three options here, spawn, power, broadcast. And we're going to change this one to one as well. So now let's go to our player form. And if you go to our switch, you can see it says hold X to use. And keep in mind, in a real game, you won't see this arrow or this little spawn beacon. It'll just be invisible. But you'll still have that little hold X to use prompt. So if you try it now, a little bar will appear. And when it's done, you can see the light turns off. It doesn't despawn. That's different. 
but the light is no longer shining. It's on the ground, not on the warthog. We've effectively turned it off by choosing a switch on and having the broadcast channel the same as the light. It sends this on command to everything on channel one. So when this channel one of the light heard that, it turned on, which for the light is kind of a misnomer because turning on the light is actually making it not shine. It doesn't really make sense, but that's just something you need to remember. Turning on lights makes them not shine. By default, they're turned off. So what if we want to turn it back on? Well, we have a couple options. Uh, switch off, probably the easiest. So I'm going to go ahead and plop one of those down. Change the broadcast channel to 1. And go in the game. And I'm sure you can imagine what's about to happen here. Hold X. And it turns back on. Go to our original one here. Hold X. And it turns off. And you can see I don't actually have the option to use it again because there's nothing on channel 1 that could be turned on right now. So it's kind of like active option allowing. That's a term I just made up. But it won't say hold X to use if there's nothing that could possibly use it. So everything on channel 1 is turned on currently, which right now is just that light. So if we go over here, it could say there is something on channel 1 that can be turned off. So we use that, and it's off. So what if you want not two switches? Well, guess what? <laughs> the toggle. This should be fairly obvious, but it pretty much is the on and off switch in one. So change the broadcast channel to one. And just for organization, I'm going to get rid of these first two switches here just so we don't get confused. And we'll go into player form. And if you hold X to use this, it'll turn it on, right? Because it's not shining. Hold X to use it again, turns it off. And you can obviously do this just infinite times over and over. And so this is probably the switch you're going to use most of the time. Most of the time you probably want to consolidate your on and off, depending on what maps you want. Uh, if it's just a light switch, then toggle is obviously the best option. But not all the time. There are times where you want to split up the power between on and off, or maybe you only want to allow players to turn on something and not turn it back off. You know, plenty of options. So the next part of this tutorial is after going through all the switches, we're going to go to timers. You can see we have six options this time. I think timers is kind of the most complicated one and uh, also the most useful once you learn how to use it. And I'm still kind of learning new fancy tricks for using timers, but it kind of breaks down to this. Last time we had three options, this time we have six, but you can see they're pretty similar. We still have on, off, and toggle. It's just now we have three additional options dispersed in there. So we have on once, off once, and toggle once. So we'll go ahead and try toggle. I like toggles. And the reason that there's six options now instead of three is that there's two fundamentally different types of timers. So the ones that are like on once, off once, and toggle once, you can think of those like microwave timers. You set a time, they count down, and then when that time's over, it does a command. The other types, the toggle off and on, are more like intermittent like stopwatches. As in, if you set it for five seconds, every five seconds it'll turn on whatever channel you set it to. Or every five seconds it'll toggle whatever channel you set it to. So we'll try that one first. We'll say a toggle timer. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the time. So the time is this bottom little category right here. And it goes pretty high. Um, it's in seconds, by the way. So we'll say, for testing purposes, five seconds. And now we just need to change the broadcast channel to one, which is what our light is on. And just let it go. So now what's gonna happen is every five seconds, it's gonna send the command to toggle everything on the one channel. So you can see it just turned off right there. It just turned back on in a second here. Isn't that cool? Really easy. A lot of options for this too. If you wanted to like make certain items appear and disappear, certain lights flashing, you know, I'm sure you could turn it down lower and make it look like some kind of light show up in here. Look at that. Now it's a party, huh? So timers are really, really versatile. You can do a lot of things with them. The other kind of timer, as I said earlier, is the once. So toggle once is like the microwave timer. So we'll say five seconds. Or no, to make it easier, we'll just make it 10 because we're going to mess around with it. 10 seconds. 
And now once we change this broadcast channel to one, you can kind of count down in your head 10 seconds. Maybe I should have made it shorter. But after 10 seconds, it's going to send a toggle command on the first channel. And when it does that, this light is going to start glowing again. But in 10 more seconds, it's not going to do it again. It's only going to do it one time, which is why it's the toggle once. So maybe this is for when you want to turn on a light or extend a bridge or do something special a certain amount of time into the game, but not right at the beginning. All right, now for the third one. Let's uh, clear these little switches here so we don't get confused, or a switch in a timer, I'm sorry. And go back to the X menu. And this time we're going to do triggers. So triggers, for all intents and purposes, are pretty much just switches. Uh, except it's not actually something you go up to and hold X to activate. It's something that's activated via your proximity to the center of it. So we'll do the easiest one first. We'll say on enter toggle. And you can see there's a little ring around it. Of course, you can change the size and shape of the ring that activates it. And we'll set the broadcast channel to one, which is what our light is on. And now whenever we enter this ring, which again is invisible during the real game, it's just during Forge we can see it. Whenever you enter it, it toggles the channel. When we leave, it doesn't. But if you enter it again, it toggles it again. So this is what triggers are. It's a switch that you don't need to activate manually. You just run through it and it does it automatically. There's other switches as well. I'm sorry, there's other triggers as well. You can do on exit toggle, which I bet you guys can guess what this does. Change the channel to one. And so now this time when we run inside of it, nothing changes. But when we leave, it toggles it. So pretty much the exact opposite of the last one that we were just doing. Let's see what else we have in here. On stay on, on stay toggle. You can kind of experiment with these. I'm not going to go over every single one in here because there's a lot. But combining all three of these switches, timers, and triggers, Forge has more capabilities than ever before. And I'm super excited to see what you guys are doing. Uh, we're thinking of doing a new series on the channel where we show off some pretty cool maps coming up once those start uh, servicing in the community. But uh, yeah, I hope this video is helpful to you guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like and uh, subscribe for more Halo videos because we're super stoked on Master Chief Collection. Till next time.